Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to a powerful edition today of uh, The Covenant Light on Tuesday. Wherever you are, go ahead, send out these links as we've always done. Join me in worship and let's get into the word. Hallelujah. When I hit a wall that you just walk through, when I face a mountain, you are the maker, so it's got to move. When I'm out of faith and you are still faithful, when I'm at my worst and you are still good, in all of my questions. Come on, sing this with me. Cause you're 
to praise hallelujah glory to God no matter what I'm going through I've still got a reason to praise you're the God of the breakthrough when we are breaking down you're still walking your way and there seems to be no way hallelujah glory be to God in the name of Jesus I don't know who that is for this morning but I believe God wanted someone to hear that he's the God of the breakthrough when you're breaking down he is the one still walking away when there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. I pray for that, my brother or sister who is at the verge of quitting, of backing down, of giving up, caving in. In the name of Jesus, receive strength right now, child of God. Receive vision for a new mission, a new level, a new place. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word today. We ask that you will grant me words and thoughts from heaven. I ask that you grant me words and thoughts from heaven so that I can speak as I should. Help me articulate your message to your people this morning. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Today I want to talk to you about how to avoid stress. We're still talking about prayer. And we're going to teach today about prayer and maybe tomorrow. But this week we're going to be spending time praying like I said to us. So either from tomorrow morning, depending on how far we go today. If we're able to round up this teaching today, we will start praying from tomorrow. Now, already in the huddles, we're already praying. And so, if you are not part of a huddle, you need to become part of a huddle. But, so in the huddles, we're already praying. However, in this very broadcast, either from tomorrow or from Thursday, we will start praying. But my intention is to bring us into a revelation and understanding. And this, this particular school of prayer, we're focusing on praying in the Spirit. There are different kinds of prayer. Most people don't understand that. They see prayer like the way you will say basketball. But in, the, but in reality, prayer is the way you will say sports. If somebody told you, let's go play sports, you will tell the person, what kind of sports do you want us to play? Uh, do you want us to play basketball? Do you want us to play football? Do you want us to play handball? Do you want us to play volleyball? Do you want us to run a, a race? Uh, 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 what kind of race do you want us to run? A hundred meters? A marathon? And so, prayer is like sports. It, there are different kinds. Bible says, pray with all kinds of prayer and supplication in the spirit. Pray with all kinds, various kinds. And every last week of every month, till further notice, we will we will make it a school of prayer and we will be learning and discovering the different kinds of prayer and where they apply. Some people wonder why there are certain prayers you should pray and not pray them again. You've heard teachings about praying and believing that you receive and therefore you don't repeat such prayers. You don't keep on praying because you believe you receive. But then they also hear about prayers that you're supposed to keep on praying. They hear about things like importunity in prayer. And the need to continue praying. And then they are confused. Well, the, the, the reality is, because you have different kinds of prayer, what is allowed in one kind of prayer is disallowed in another kind of prayer. Just like in sports. In basketball, touching the ball with your feet is disallowed. In football, touching the ball with your hands is disallowed. In basketball, touching the ball with your hands is the rule, is the game. In football, touching the ball 
with your hands is foul. And that's exactly how prayer is. And they apply to different situations. There's a prayer of casting of cares that applies to situations that you are, when you are worried about something. There's a prayer of faith when you are desiring something, the peti- a prayer of petition. There's a prayer of consecration when you don't know what to do and you are faced with several options and you don't know which choice to make. And you pray and, and, and ask that God's will be done. You commit yourself to God's will and you consecrate yourself. That's the prayer that Jesus prayed when he said, not my will, but thine be done. Uh, you don't pray that prayer when you are trying to get healed, for instance. You don't say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. You cannot exercise your faith with that kind of prayer for healing. Because in the case of healing, the will of God is already revealed. The will of God is already known. You only pray that prayer when the will of God is not obvious, is not revealed in the scriptures. You can't say, if it's your will, heal me. No, you say, sickness, get out of my body. In that case, you pray the prayer of authority, the prayer of binding and losing, which is a prayer of authority. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. So you disallow sickness in your body. You command it to cease. And you get up from that place and you are healed. Now, take it from someone who has walked in divine health for over 20 years. Hallelujah. But we're going to be learning this. Every last week of every month, we will look at, we will have a school of prayer. We will spend a few days learning it, learning a particular aspect of prayer, a particular kind of prayer or two, and then we will practice it um, during that same week on the remaining days. So if we're able to con- conclude on, the, on praying in the spirit today, we will start tomorrow. And we will just be praying in the spirit Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday and dealing and addressing stuff. So let's look at the word of God about this. One of the, one of the places where praying in the spirit, praying in tongues applies is in what we're talking about, avoiding stress. Let's look at the scriptures and let's begin. Now, stress is caused by absence of wisdom. According to the scriptures, now, a lot of what I'm going to say may not agree with um, accepted theories and norms but like I said I've said to us several times the Bible tells us that the the law will go forth from Zion the law will go forth from Zion eventually down the road people are going to realize as more and more believers begin to apply the scriptures properly and accurately and get results. Imagine if, if 90% of believers can say like I am and boast in the Lord, not in themselves, boast in the Lord like I've been doing. I've, not, I've, I've been walking in divine health for 20 years. Can you imagine if 90% of believers can say that? Believe me, doctors will come to us to find out what's going on and the law will go forth from Zion. The principles for living will be the theories. There will be new books written reimagining medicine reimagining psychology reimagining uh, 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 social, social social psychology and all of those things reimagining success reimagining uh, 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 a lot of the things that they've accepted they will reconsider because they will see results happening imagine if we could say that 90 percent of believers in every city every place in the world are living above poverty. Imagine how much the world will need to come learn. But that's going to happen. And that's why God has raised people like myself and many others to begin to present the word of God in a practical, applicable way so that people can apply them and get results. So weariness, according to the scriptures, weariness or stress When the Bible talks about weariness, it's not talking about being tired generally. Everybody gets, if you work hard, you will get tired. You will need to recuperate. That tiredness is not wrong, it's not evil, it's not negative. But weariness in scriptures is stress. That's not being tired, that's being constantly, constantly stressed. And it is caused by the absence of wisdom. 
The Bible says it this way in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. The labor of, the, of fools wearies them, for they do not even know how to go to the city. The labor of fools wearies them. It's not saying that this person is a bad person. It's just that he doesn't know what to do. Not knowing what to do is the source of being weary and stressed. The labor of fools wearies them, for they do not know their way into the city. Why? Because they've never been to that city. Even a fool knows the way to the city where he lives. Even a fool knows the way home. But, but going from where you are to a city you've not been to, now you need information you did not have. You need knowledge that you did not possess. And so either you are asking from someone the way into the city, or if you are like most men, you're trying to pretend like you know your way, and you keep going round in circles. And so not knowing their way into the city is because the city is in the future. The city is somewhere they've not been before. And so it begins to cause stress because they do not know their way into the city. They lack knowledge of what to do. Now, therefore, if that is the case, rest for the weary now becomes wisdom. Rest for the weary is knowing what to do, knowing what's going on and how to respond to it becomes rest for the weary. Rest for the weary becomes knowing what's going on and how to respond to it. We call that wisdom. Bible calls that wisdom. Now, this rest for the weary, being wisdom, explains why Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then he explains how he will give the rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you, learn, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you means do things the way I will do them. When a, 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 an oxen is yoked with another oxen, they have to do things the same way. When this oxen turns, when the stronger oxen turns left, the younger oxen turns left. When the older oxen turns right, the younger oxen turns right because they are yoked together. So he said, take my yoke upon you. So do things the way I do them. Handle finances the way I handle finances. Handle your spiritual life the way I handle my spiritual life. Handle prayer the way I handle prayer. Handle business the way I would have handled business. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. So by saying learn of me and get rest, he brings the idea that wisdom is the solution for weariness. Wisdom is the rest for weariness. Now I'm going to move very fast because I'm going to try and cover everything we need to cover today so we start praying tomorrow. But if we don't, we will continue tomorrow. So it is at this point, this knowledge, that wisdom is the solution for being weary. Simply, uh, uh, even from the scriptures we just read, the labor of fools wearies them. Therefore, the solution for they are not being weary would be wisdom. All right. And Jesus says, come learn of me. All right. So it is this at this point that praying in the spirit now comes in. Accessing wisdom about things that we do not know. Wisdom about things that are ahead of us. Things that are in the future. Humanity is not, is not equipped to predict the future. Now, we can extrapolate from the past. We can guess from previous experience what could happen. But we are unable to be certain about the future the way we are about the past. And that is supposed to be a limitation for humanity. But for the believer, it really should not be. Now, let me show you scriptures. So in Isaiah 28, from verse 11 to 12, now you may need to listen to this message over and over again. I encourage you to do that. In Isaiah 28, the Bible says, from verse 11 to 12, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. With, watch this, stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people. 
This phrase, stammering lips and another tongue, refers to speaking in tongues. It was a prophecy about speaking in tongues. We know that because Paul, in talking about speaking in tongues, referred to this scripture. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 21, Paul said, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to these people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. Therefore tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. So Paul was teaching about tongues in in 1 Corinthians 14, and he quoted this scripture about stammering lips and other tongues, and said it was a prophecy about speaking in tongues. So the Bible confirms that. We don't need to argue about that. Alright, so going back to that scripture now, knowing that it's talking about speaking in tongues, it says, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. Remember, we've already established that rest for the weary is wisdom. Rest for the weary is taking the yoke of Jesus, knowing what Jesus would have done in a situation and doing it, knowing the will of God in a situation. The will of God in a situation is wisdom in any situation. If you know what God wants you to do in a situation, that's exactly the wisdom for that situation. The Bible also says so in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, be not... It says, uh, 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 um, know, what the, it says know what the will of the Lord is. Know what the will of the Lord is. Know what the will of the Lord is. And the Bible refers to that as wisdom. Let me get that passage of scripture out. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. For Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17. It says, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So, when you know what the will of the Lord is, is in a, in a situation, you know what wisdom is for that situation. If you are trying to start a business and you don't know about the future, you don't know COVID is, is two months away, and you want to start a business in entertainment and uh, 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 events planning or you're about to open an event center but not knowing that the next two years we are going to be in a lockdown now if you know the will of the lord if you're able to access the will of the lord in that situation at that moment you will know god is saying nah don't start now don't start now now that becomes the wisdom it becomes wise to not start now and becomes unwise to start now. Even though everything before today, everything in the past, extrapolating from the past, indicates you should start now. But if you were to access God's mind at that moment and know what the mind of the Lord is at that moment, you will know that you should not start. And that becomes wisdom. That is the wisdom for that very moment. And so, we've already established that the will of the Lord, the wisdom for every situation, is the rest for the weary. And he says, with stammering lips, I will speak rest to them. I will tell them the wisdom that will give rest. Can you see that? Let's look at it again. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people. So the stammering lips is how he speaks. Not what he said. You see, tongues is a means of communication. But the content of that communication is wisdom. With stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people. To whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. So the content, when you are speaking in tongues... The content of that communication is rest, is wisdom 
for what's happening around you and what is in front of you. That's what you are speaking. The Bible is clear about that. You see, these things I'm saying, I'm saying them, then I show you the scriptures for them. So in 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 6, we looked at this yesterday. Now you understand what he meant when he said in 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 6, talking about speaking in tongues still, he says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Remember? Stammering lips, another tongue. What is that to the person who is who does not speak that tongue? Mystery. Stammering lips, another tongue. In other words, God said, I'm going to put that wisdom in coded language. I'm going to put that wisdom in stammering lips. So the person who is uninitiated, to the outsider, what he's hearing is like people stammering. Just like any other tongue. If you, if you are an American and you hear me speaking Igbo, my native language, you will, all you are hearing is stammering lips. To you, I'm just stammering. I'm just blabbing. To you, I'm just making noise. But to, the, to a fellow Igbo man, I am speaking articulate language. He can hear me. So the Bible says, with stammering lips and another tongue, I will communicate the wisdom, the rest, to my people. Now the question is, why is he saying it? Why is he coding it? Why is he putting it in coded language? Well, we find the, the answers to that. The answer to that all over Scripture. It, it, continuing in First Corinthians chapter two, the Bible says, "We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew." So you see why he's hiding it from the rulers of this age. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So they end up cooperating with you. Because they don't even know what you're saying. You are speaking the wisdom of God. You end up understanding it because you are initiated. You are the mature. He says we speak the wisdom of God among those who are mature. You are the mature. You end up understanding it. And I'm going to show you how you end up understanding it. Because the Bible says, let him that speaks in a tongue. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 13. Pray that he may interpret. You see, tongues... For you as a believer is not meant to be coded. When you speak in tongues, your understanding does not get it. But your spirit is supposed to get it. Your spirit gets it. And when you pray in tongues long enough, events, revelation, and all of that around you will begin to interpret what, you have, what you've prayed. Don't worry about that. It always happens. You just need to say, Lord, I received the interpretation for this time, uh, 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 for these tongues that, you're, that I'm speaking right now in Jesus' name. Let him that prays in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. The interpretation always comes and it comes to our spirit because your spirit knows. And it comes in different ways. You just It comes in as a realization, a knowing. You live in the consciousness all of a sudden, you are, you are uncomfortable with that event planning center, I mean event center that you wanted to start. You are just uncomfortable with it because your spirit knows something. Your spirit has downloaded some, some information that your mind does, has not grasped. And so you just, you're feeling uncomfortable with it. You're feeling, you know, so, so, dis, 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 you know, so pained at the idea. And you're wondering, why am I so uncomfortable with this? And you spend more time praying. And then gradually it comes to you. It's not time yet. It's not time yet. It's not time yet. Now, you got that. The princes, the rulers of this age, the powers of darkness, and the children of darkness do not get it. The unbelievers don't get it. 
And that's why Paul said, now I know I'm loading you guys with so much today. <laughs> so you may need to go listen and listen and listen to this message. I encourage you to do that. That's why, that's why the Bible says, Paul speaking, said that tongues, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 22, we just read that some time ago. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. Tongues, speaking in tongues, is not a mysterious thing to us as believers. It's not a sign for us. A sign is something that catches your attention. A sign is something that, like, what? What's that? What? Now, that's a sign. All right? For us as believers, tongues is not a sign for us as believers. Why? Because we get it. Believers, if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, you're filled with the Spirit, you ought to get tongues. When you speak in tongues and continue to speak in tongues, don't, don't occupy the room of the unlearned. Don't be that person who thinks, well, I don't get it because my mind is unfruitful. No, your mind is unfruitful. Your spirit gets it. So tongues is not a sign for you. Tongues is not a shocking occurrence for you. Tongues is not for you something you're like, wow, what? No, for you, tongues is normal. Tongues is like you being English, speaking English. Your mind may not get it right there, but to your spirit, it is English spoken to an Englishman. And so it's not a sign for you. And so you are not one of those people who, had they known, they would not have started the event center. Had they known, they would not have started that business when they started. Had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You are not one of them. You are those that know and therefore did not crucify the Lord of glory. Because even though it's spoken in a mystery, because to, to the natural mind, it makes no sense. But to the spiritual man, it is, he has understanding of it. So it's not a sign for him. It's not a sign for him. So let's, let's continue uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So it says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Verse 8 which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us. Not will reveal, has revealed to us through his spirit. So when you were praying in the spirit, God was revealing something to your spirit. Hallelujah. Not will reveal. God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of God for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God no believer should be saying I don't know what business to go into no believer should know. I say, I don't know what location I should be living in. No. If you are a mature believer, you ought to know. We speak this wisdom among those who are mature. And we're not talking about maturity in the sense of how long you've been a Christian. We're talking about maturity in the sense of receiving the completion of the Christian experience. Receiving the fullness of the Christian experience. Which is not just salvation, but that infilling of the Holy Spirit. Receiving the fullness, the completion, the teleios in Greek, the mature, the fullness of the totality of the Christian experience, what was made available for you. Receiving the fullness of it. Those who have received it, we speak this wisdom in a mystery. Now, let me close with something that for most of us who have been hearing this kind of teaching before will be a little shock, a little shocker for us. We normally quote the scripture in Isaiah 28, where the Bible says, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people. I'm quoting it now from verse 11. To whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Now look at this. He said, Yet they will not hear. You know, because it's coded language. Then he said, and Because they refuse to come into the 
initiated, to become one of the initiated, to receive that baptism in the Holy Spirit and be able to receive the Spirit. The Bible says He has given us the Spirit so that we might know these things. So when someone refuses to come into that circle by receiving the Holy Spirit so that he can know, then he's one of those people that would not hear. Remember? The, the, one of those rulers of this age, one of those nobles. And he said, for you see your calling, brethren, not many noble, not many of the mighty, not many of the rulers, not many of the, the princes, not many of the, none of those people are called. You see your calling. God has chosen the foolish things to confound the wise. The base things. All right. So, those people who feel like they have what they need and don't need the Holy Spirit and don't need this blabbing and stammering lips and another tongue, well, they will not hear. But he continues. This is where I want to go to. It says, But the word of the Lord was to those people, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and ensnared and caught. So this concept of precept upon precept, line upon line, is actually a negative thing in a sense. Please hear me completely. He was saying, this is what the Bible says. When you read the whole of Isaiah 28, I encourage you to go read the whole of Isaiah 28. It began by saying, talking about people, Ephraim and the, the you know, uh, 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 and, and other people who were, were not receiving what God was saying and were trusting in themselves and in their strengths, in their own wisdom. And they were getting drunk and not receiving the revelation and the visions and the word of the Lord. Now, he said, to them came instructions like precept upon precept, Information came to them only in their understanding. Precept upon precept, line upon line. They were told, for instance, go into the city. That's a precept. That's, that's an, an order. That word precept there is a, a Hebrew word for order, a command. Go into the city. But they couldn't find their way into the city. And their labor wearies them because of foolishness because they don't know how to get into the city so they have the precepts they have the commands they have the instructions but the strength and enablement and wisdom to execute was not there and god says stammering lips another tongue i will speak the wisdom that you need so that no, no flesh will glory in my presence. You will access the strength and the wisdom you need to get to the city to carry out those precepts. You will access it, glory to God, by stammering lips and another tongue. But they will not hear. So he says, so to them, because they will not hear, all they will get is the precepts and the precepts and the lines and the lines. And here a little, a little glimpse here, a little glimpse there. Here a little, there a little. Why? So that at the end of the day, they fall backward and are broken and ensnared and caught. And that's exactly what the scriptures say, that God has chosen the foolish things to confound the wise. God has, God, God has chosen to destroy the wisdom of the wise by choosing base things and stammering lips and another tongue. So at the end of the day, the precepts are not wrong. The line upon line is not wrong. But that's all that those who will not engage the spirit have. They have do not commit adultery. They have do not steal. They have do not lie. They have the orders. They have the lines upon lines. They have the theories. They have the instruction to get to the city but they do not have the way to get to the city. They have the order. They know I should get to the city, but they do not have the wisdom to get to the city because the wisdom is what will give them rest. When you know what to do, you are at rest. 
you walk into an exam hall and you see the questions and you know the answers. You are no stress. You don't know the answers, you are stressed. Knowing what to do causes you to avoid stress. And God, in his wisdom, has chosen to hide it and put it. The wisdom, the things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, that God has prepared for you, he has hidden. Bible calls it hidden wisdom. The things for your glory, he has hidden in stammering lips and another tongue. And this week, we are going to spend time, 30 minutes or thereabouts, for at least two or three days this week, in these devotions that we have. We're just going to come together and speak in tongues. And you're going to see how, I want you to observe October. As you continue to speak in tongues like that, observe the month of October. So that no man once again will, will cause you to be tossed to and fro by winds of doctrine. You know, right now you are feeling like, yeah, I believe in this speaking in tongues thing. Then somebody comes tomorrow and says something else to you and you don't believe in it anymore. But when you experience it for yourself, when you can leave Nigeria and go to Nairobi because you were speaking in tongues and you knew the wisdom of God and the results in Nairobi begins to show you were supposed to be here. When you will leave Nairobi and go to Uganda and Kampala, like I did last week, because you were speaking in tongues and you knew Kampala is the next place. And the results there showcase that you were right. Nobody will ever, ever cause you to be tossed to and fro by winds of doctrine about tongues anymore. So observe October. So join in as we spend time praying then observe the month of October. Pray all through that month as well. Pray at least 30 minutes in tongues all through the month and observe your sense of consciousness of God's will. Observe the, how aware you are of the real situation of things and what your response should be and compare it with other times when you didn't do that and you will have your answers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Lord, I ask you that you help us live out the truth that we've learned today. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's my big request today, Father. A new day is dawning upon the lives of many people today. I just sense that in my spirit. A new day is dawning, an opening of eyes. And so today, I prophesy a new day. I prophesy a new beginning. You've told us October is the month of new things. When people are saying, let's start winding down because it's the end of the year. You are saying, I am starting some things now. For some people, it just began for them. So today, you've called October a month of new things. In the name of Jesus, I pray for new beginnings. Things that we've almost given up on and started planning for next year. In the name of Jesus, let events happen now to restart and re-engage with things that we've almost quit. And given up on in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining in today. Join me tomorrow. Let's see where the Holy Ghost is taking this. Have a wonderful day. Remember, you are loved by God, it's unconditional. And because of it, you're experiencing His wisdom, His power, and His favor. Hallelujah. Stay in the consciousness of God's love for you. Have a wonderful day.